Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. Stories start in many different ways. This one began and ended inside a man's brain. Six inches inside. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Don't talk to me about love. Give me a good, healthy hate every time. It's clean cut. It's something a guy can handle. But love? Uh Uh-uh, it's too dangerous. It's like rich, sweet earth. Flowers grow there, but sometimes a monstrosity can grow there, too. You take the love of a girl for a sweetheart, of a father for his daughter, or a wife for a husband. Beautiful, touching, inspiring? Yep, but not tonight. I got up early today because I wanted to see what the afternoon sun felt like. You know what I mean if you've ever worked the night side. The sun felt good, but it felt lonely. So I dropped into the reporter's room at the receiving hospital to see if I could find a poker game. I couldn't even find a reporter. They were all out chasing a local fire. So I called it a blank, and I was just leaving. I spotted a couple of familiar faces through the open door of the examination room. Hey, Randy. There were a couple of young doctors I knew as Ed and Herb. There was a third person in the room lying on the examination table. Come on in, Randy. Oh, sure. Hi. Want to hear troubles? Get a load of Eddie. Oh, can you believe it? Dinner and the theater. Not just dinner, not just the theater, both. And she gives me that dodge about I just have to get up early for work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so next time you'll ask questions first and then spend money. Yeah. What are you doing around here, Randy? Listening to people's troubles. Yeah, this guy on the table. He's got troubles. Are you a patient? Yeah. Yeah, he's our patient. Temporarily. What have you? Gunshot wound right through the head. Zowie. Suicide? Well, if it was, he must have swallowed the gun. Lorraine. Lorraine. Doctor. Uh, you'll be all right. We're doctors. You'll be all right. Uh, Randy, maybe we better talk over here. Uh, that, that man is sick. How can you guys talk this way in here? No, nothing bothers us. Not much. He's delirious, Randy. It doesn't make any difference. Not to him. Mm, you get pretty tough, don't you? <laughs> don't let us kid you. Is he going to die? Maybe. I don't know. We've done what we can. Maybe Reynolds can save him. Reynolds? Well, the doctor? Brain surgeon. The best. We got a call in for him. Right. Oh, that guy give you the creeps. Who shot him? Who knows who shot him? Maybe you want a story? I'll tell you what I know. His name's Jerry Carn. He had a nice apartment, but now there's blood on the rug. His identification card says, notify Mrs. Lorraine Carn in case of emergency. So I guess she's his wife. He's been shot in the head and the bullet's still in there. Want me to get technical? Hello. Uh, yes, Dr. Reynolds. This is Dr. Boyd at the receiving hospital. We have a case. A gunshot head wound. Dr. Reynolds, we Reynolds. want to know... No, don't want Reynolds. I'm sorry, Dr. Reynolds, I can't talk here. Will you hold on just a minute, please? I'll take the call on another phone. I'll be right back, Herb. No, don't let him. No, it sounds like he knows this, Dr. Reynolds. Yeah. Well, why not? Well, maybe he does. Don't ask me. Reynolds... No, I don't. Jerry. Huh? He's a fine doctor. No, please. Who shot you, Jerry? He's not really conscious. Better let him rest, Randy. Has his wife been informed? I don't know. She lives at a different address. I guess they're separated. Herb, Randy. Is uh, Reynolds taking the case? No. Dr. Reynolds is not taking the case. He isn't? Why not? Dr. Reynolds is taking a vacation. Dr. Reynolds severed all contact with the sick and the lame as of today. Dr. Reynolds must go get his back sunburned on the French Riviera. So what happens to Jerry Kahn? He dies. You mean just like that? No, oh, maybe not. Reynolds has an associate, Dr. Wright. Maybe Wright will do the job. But not as well as Reynolds. Well, we'll move Kahn to the Cook County Hospital. Wright operates there. I don't get it. A man, a doctor, he's got the power to save a life, and he takes a vacation. That's the way it is. Well, ah, come on, Ed. Let's make out his transfer papers. Coming, Randy? No, uh, no, no. Uh, it's almost time for me to start work. I, uh, I'll stick around. See you. Okay. I stood there in the hall for a minute, trying to figure the angles. I. I thought of Reynolds, and I was getting sore. 
Good enough thinking that Jerry Carr knew his name, that his babbling was more than babbling. I turned back to the examination room and reached for the door handle. Hold it, Randy. Well, 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 Sergeant Kalski. What are you doing out in broad daylight? Enjoying myself, having fun. Are uh, you on the case? Yeah. Oh, Kalski, the death watch kid. What makes you think he's going to die? What makes you think he won't? He's in a hospital. There's doctors. Yeah, I know. There's doctors, and then there's doctors. What do you know about this? He's got a wife named Lorraine. We haven't got a line on her yet. Maybe she'll show here. I'm waiting. How does she figure, Kalski? Well, she figures like this. The neighbors say she kept coming to see Karn, but he had himself a girlfriend. So maybe, just maybe, the wife shoots the husband. Hmm. Uh, know anything about the girl? Just her name, Reynolds, Miss Reynolds. <laughs> So there it was, Reynolds, the tie-in between Karn and the brain surgeon. I thanked Kalski and I headed for a telephone book. Dr. Philip Reynolds, Sheridan Road. It was already dark when my cab arrived. I started up the walk past the row of bushes. Reynolds. What? I've got a gun. Maybe I'll kill you. The dark, I can't see you. I've got it all right. I'm lucky, Reynolds. I just got here and now you're here. What do you want? I want to hurt somebody. But don't we all? Smart, aren't you? You and your daughter. You know who I am, you know? No. Jerry Kahn is my husband. You're Lorraine. And you're Diane's father. Just that. Just that is enough to make me want to kill you. I was waiting for her, waiting here. Did you shoot Jerry? Me. Me. Oh. Lorraine. <laughs> Lorraine. You don't want this gun, anyhow. No. It's the gun that killed your husband? He said he wouldn't see her anymore. We'd be together again. Lorraine, I'm not Dr. Reynolds. You... But you... I'm just a guy who got sore. Stone, Randy Stone. I thought... I... You're too mixed up to think. She shot Jerry. Diane shot him. Maybe you shot him. Oh, sure. Sure, maybe I did. You love a man, you wait for him. Wait until he's ready to come back to you. Then when he is ready, you shoot him. <laughs> is that right? Is that what I did? All right, all right. I'm wrong. How was it? He was going to tell Diane today. Tell her he wanted me back. I went to see him. To... He would carry him out on the stretcher. Lorraine, will you do something for me? What? Wait. Wait for me right here. Oh, sure, I'll wait. Like I waited for Jerry. He might still live. Why do you want me to wait? I want to talk to Reynolds and talk to his daughter. Why? Don't ask me, sister. I ought to know better. I started up the walk toward the Reynolds house. You could barely see Lorraine Carn. She was a shadow, still and motionless. Her mind rolling like a handful of ball bearings. The door was opened by a heavily built man with gray hair and tortoise shell glasses. Yes? Uh, Dr. Reynolds? I'm Dr. Reynolds. May I come in? Uh, what is it you want? Thank you. I'll see here. My name is Stone, Randy Stone. I'm a reporter for the Chicago Star. Does that give you leave to barge into my house? I don't know, does it? I'm sorry, Mr. Stone. My daughter and I are just leaving for the airport. We have no time. Hello, Dad. Miss Reynolds, I'm a newspaper man, Randy Stone. Is there anything... Yes, yes, there is something. I just left the receiving hospital. The man's been shot. Well, if this has anything to do with my professional services, I'm afraid that's out of the question. Well, this man, his name is Jerry Carn. What? He's dying. Jerry? What happened? He was shot through the head. In a few hours, he'll be dead. Your father might save him if he operates. He doesn't care to operate. Well... But, Father, you didn't... Jerry, you... I'm sorry, Diane. I, I thought it best not to tell you. You thought it best? A married man. I, I begged you not to see him. Mr. Stone, who shot him? Ask the police. Do they know? Well, they know he's been shot, and they know he'll die unless your father operates. I'm sorry, Mr. Stone. I don't propose to pass judgment on this man, but even a doctor is entitled to a vacation. I plan to leave tonight. Uh, Diane... Hey, you can't leave. I love Jerry. You're my father. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Well, Doctor... There are other surgeons. But not you, huh? I've made plans. So a man's life doesn't count? Or are you worried about your fee? Don't be insulting, Mr. Stone. I'm not concerned with fees. 
Only this afternoon I operated on a charity case. Well, what does that prove? If it proves anything... All right, all right, forget it. You handled a charity case this afternoon, but this is now, tonight. Look at your daughter. Father, please. Jerry wanted me to see him today. I, I didn't go. I thought that, that perhaps going away, I, I wanted to please you. I knew it was wrong. I, I knew he was married. I, I bet he's going to die. I'll go away with you. I won't see him again, but... Father, please. Uh, Mr. Stone, what hospital is Karn in? They moved him to the county hospital. I'll operate. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you. Good night, Mr. Stone. Good night, Doctor. Miss Reynolds. Go figure people out. There was genuine shock and horror on Diane Reynolds' face when I told her about the shooting. No actress is that good. And Reynolds? Reynolds was a confused guy who loved his daughter. And there was Lorraine Carr, a wife who'd lost her husband. Her head spinning with love and hate and no control. She could kill all right. She could... Oh, Stone, smart guy. Me, the sharp operator who'd left her outside waiting like a live bomb, waiting to kill Diane. And when I got out there, she wasn't waiting. Lorraine Carn was gone. NBC is bringing you Night Beat. Starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. And now back to Night Beat and Randy Stone. For about 20 minutes, I searched the grounds around the Reynolds house. Lorraine Corn was gone, all right. Where to? In her condition, anywhere. She could have even made a pass at the Cook County Hospital, where her husband, Jerry, was dying of a head wound. Dr. Reynolds left the house alone and drove away. Alone, without his daughter, Diane. Diane, who loved or had loved Jerry Kern. I tried the door again. Yes. Oh, Mr. Stone. Miss Reynolds, I saw your father leave here alone. I... I thought you wanted to be with Jerry Kahn. My father said he'd operate, but he wanted me to stay here. Maybe it'd be better if you came to the hospital. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. You can go with me. I love him. I was going away because my father... I love him. Well, then let's go to the hospital, Miss Reynolds. Still standing guard, Kowski? Hello, Randy. I thought you were out of it. No, I got inquisitive. Sergeant Kowski, meet Diane Reynolds. How do you do? Are you related to Dr. Reynolds? She's his daughter, Kowski. Lorraine Karn hasn't shown up here, has she? No, nothing. How's the patient? Unconscious. Uh, can I see him? No. Do you know him? Yes. How do you... I'll tell you later, Kowski. What? Sergeant. What do you say, Doc? Uh, perhaps you live with Reynolds operating. You on the case, Doctor? Randy Stone, this is Dr. Wright. He was going to take over Reynolds' work. How do you do? How do you do? Of course, Dr. Reynolds will operate now. I... Diane, what are you doing here? I, I came to... Didn't I hear a call for Dr. Wright a moment ago? Oh, thank you. I have to go over the x-rays with Dr. Reynolds. Sergeant Kosky, your nurse is remaining with the patient until he goes to the operating room. Did you assign the nurse, Dr. Wright? I know. Well, now, if you'll excuse me. But... Well, Kosky, who's the nurse? How do I know? Maybe we better find out. She was standing over the bed, the figure in white, intense, concentrated. I stood behind her. How is he? No, you won't stop me. It was Lorraine Carter, her lips almost as white as the uniform she wore. They made her eyes look black no, you won't. and empty. He's going to die. Let's go, Lorraine. He, he's going to die. Come on. <laughs> Sergeant Kowski, meet Lorraine Carnes. What, uh, 
She's a nurse. She borrowed a nurse's uniform. He's going to die. I wanted to be with him. I wanted to look at him. I just wanted to touch you. You shot him. Oh, you're Diane, aren't you? He loved me. He didn't want you. He loved me. I wanted to kill you. Before I wanted to kill you. He's so quiet. He's almost dead now. What good would it do? Randy, for Pete's sake, what is this? Watch them, Kowski. It's a long story. It's the longest story in the world. I'm going to find Reynolds. Please, Mr. Stone, uh, don't stand too close to me while I'm scrubbing. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you, uh, you seem to have unduly concerned yourself in this incident. I'm a newspaper man, Dr. Reynolds. I was interested. Oh? May I inquire why? Because you refused to operate. Oh. But now I choose to operate. Does your uh, interest uh, cease? No. Now I'm interested in who shot Jerry Kahn. Perhaps his wife. Maybe. I, uh, I'll be perfectly frank with you. I regret the whole affair. I, I didn't like my daughter seeing a married man. He encouraged her. I was taking her away. Uh-huh. Now I shall take her away tomorrow. But tonight, I shall save his life if it's possible for a surgeon to do that. Mm-hmm. Well, now I'll ask you a silly question. Why? Oh, I suppose... Primarily because I'm a surgeon. Not because your daughter wants you to operate. My daughter? No, no, no. No, I think one trains himself, you understand? One trains himself, and and then there's a certain moral aspect. I I dislike talking about morality, but, well, every once in a while we have to live with it, don't we? Every once in a while. Well, then, I'll operate, you see? We walked to the operating room together, Reynolds and I. There were two benches outside. Lorraine Carn was sitting on one of them, her hands tightened into a knot. Kalski sat next to her, one hand hard on her elbow. Diane Reynolds sat on the other bench, strained and picking at a handkerchief. Dr. Wright was talking to her. Reynolds stopped and looked at his daughter. Diane. Yes? I, uh... I'm sorry for you. I... My dear, I'm a doctor, and I... And then Reynolds turned and passed through the swing doors into the operating room. I turned to Diane. What's the matter, Miss Reynolds? You look sick. No, I... I'm just worried. I... I, don't... I don't think I can stand it in here. Dr. Wright, please take me outside. There's a little matter of the police involved in this. I suggest you stay here. Sergeant Kowski says you stay, you stay. Haven't they, Dr. Wright? Yes. It's rather difficult, as you know. The finding operation. How does it work? The patient was shot through the forehead. A bullet passing through the frontal lobe of the brain and lodging somewhere in the occipital region. The increased pressure inside the skull will kill Mr. Carr. Unless the bullet is removed and the wound channel cleaned. Uh-huh. How do they go about it? Mm, surgeon removes part of the skull, exposing the brain. It's a matter of probing for the bullet with a needle. Once discovering it, removing it. The probing. And that's the critical part of clumsy move, a slip. The patient's gone. It can happen. Look, do you have to talk about it? Do you have to sit there and kill him with words? She's afraid. She's afraid he'll live. Diane, oh, yeah, that's no need to be cruel. She was cruel to Jerry, wasn't she? We don't know, not yet. Dr. Wright, I understand you were to take over Dr. Reynolds' practice while he was away. Yes, Mr. Stone, it was this morning. This morning? It's the usual arrangement. You mean he didn't see any patients today? No, he left everything to me. But he said he had a charity patient. He said... 
Dr. Wright, do you think that Dr. Reynolds could possibly have operated today? Not under the circumstances. Why do you ask? How far has that operation progressed in there? It's hard to say. Perhaps he's into the brain already. Can anybody else take over? That's ridiculous. I didn't ask if it was ridiculous. Is it possible? No. Not and save the patient's life. Kalski. Yeah, Randy? You're about to have a new experience as a police officer. You're going to stand right by and see a man murdered. By Reynolds? Reynolds. He must have shot Jerry Carr, and he told me he had a charity case today. Dr. Wright says no. He had motive enough. He wanted Jerry to leave his daughter alone. Reynolds was forced into operating tonight. Now he'll finish the job. That doctor in there, he's the one who shot Jerry. My own father. He can't. For me, he oh, can't. Oh, Surgeon, the great doctor, the benefactor of man. This is unbelievable. I've known Reynolds for ten years. He's devoted to his profession. Sure, sure, but devotion goes so far, and then the ego takes over. Reynolds is in there protecting his ego now, the self, to him, most important thing in the world, more important than you, Diane. Then stop him. Stop him. Randy, we can't just sit here. Well, how do you stop him? He's got his hands inside the man's brain. I don't know how, but I'm going in there. Father, you can't do it. You can't Maybe do it. Maybe you better it. stay out here with him. I don't understand what this is all about, but I'll go in there if you think... We stay here, Dr. Wright. Randy, get in there. Doctor, I'll need a robe and a mask. There. Retractor. Retractor. I stood by the operating table. Nobody looked up. Reynolds was working swiftly, working on Jerry Kahn's exposed brain. I thought I'd feel sick looking at it, but I didn't. I just watched Reynolds' hands. The electro knife. Keep up that irrigation. We'll be ready to probe in a minute. Just then, Reynolds looked up just for a minute. They looked at me. There was a misery in him so close and tangible I was infected with it myself. I saw a hardness in the back of his eyes. A determination. Almost fanatic. Well, Mr. Stone, I, I presume your presence here means you figured things out? Yes, I have. I'll have to ask you to leave. You see, I'm the surgeon. I stay. Very well. Electro knife. Suction here. He shrugged. He turned back to the operating table. I felt a helpless, lonely gagging in my throat. Irrigation. Keep your eyes. I was going to watch a man die. I was going to watch a man murdered right in front of my eyes. And Reynolds was right. He was the surgeon. There was nothing I could do about it. Ventricle needle. Suction, please. The nurse handed him a long needle, and I remembered what Dr. Wright had said. This was the probing for the bullet. This was the edge of death. Irrigation. I saw the needle poise over the brain, over living tissue, the center of Jerry Carnes' being. And then I felt sick. Right then, the needle went in. There it is. The bullet. He'd found it, and the needle hadn't killed. But it had explored and found the bullet. Reynolds' hands were working surely and easily. Forceps. The instrument was balanced in his hand, and then it dived into the brain. The bullet, Mr. Stone. He'll live now. Are you really surprised? He'll live now. Mr. Stone, is, is he... He'll be all right. He'll live. Oh, thank God. Thank God. He'll live. Yes, Miss Reynolds. Oh, then my father didn't... He didn't... No. He's still got an attempted murder charge to face when he walks out of that operating room. Has he, Diane? My father. Yes, your father. I thought of something in there. Something I couldn't miss when I saw his hands. Your father knows life and he knows death. Miss Reynolds, if he'd tried to kill Jerry Carney, would have succeeded. I didn't think... 
I thought for me. You thought he'd kill for you, didn't you? Until he walked into that operating room, and then you knew different. Then you were afraid. He's known all along who shot Karn. He didn't want to operate because he couldn't without condemning his own daughter. My own father. He let me go to jail. Because Karn wanted his wife back and because he told you you tried to kill him and you botched the job. That's why you were so shocked when I told you he wasn't dead. My own father. My own father. He's yours, Kalski. And sweet dreams tonight. Diane. What about Reynolds here? You're the cop. That's what you get paid for. You handle it. Diane. My own father. I didn't stay. I didn't look up. I didn't want to see the look in Dr. Reynolds' eyes. I knew he was suffering like a tortured animal. A man who loved his daughter. A man who was a doctor. Sure, sure, I could have looked. Would have been an experience, another couple of paragraphs for my story, but who needs a story that bad? Who needs anything except, well, maybe a drink. Copy, boy. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and directed by Warren Lewis. Tonight's script was written by Richard Allen Simmons from an original story by Norman Jacob and Sanford Wolfe, with music by Frank Worth. The part of Dr. Reynolds was played by Ted Von Elts. Joan Banks was Lorraine. Betty Moran played Diane. Others in tonight's cast were Jonathan Hole, Jack Lloyd, and John Stevenson. Listen next week at this time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. Nightbeat came to you from Hollywood. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.